This is Hoosier Ag Today with another Indiana corn and soybean field update featuring insights from seed consultants agronomist Bill Mullen. I'm Andy Eubank, and I joined Bill in a cornfield between Greensburg and Batesville in southeastern Indiana. Bill found a couple of concerns that confirm suspect plants should be harvested as soon as possible. Right here, September 29th, uh, out in the field of corn, um, that's about oh, six miles east of Greensburg, Indiana, and a little bit south of uh, Interstate 74. Whole purpose of today is, is to go into cornfields because pretty much beans are getting to the point where they're half done, but there's some issues out there in the cornfield. But there is good corn out there, but we gotta make sure that everybody's aware of some of the issues out there that could prevent us from getting those ears into the combine, into the bin that we need to be aware of. First issue you really want to look at is we're on this uh, customer's uh, farm and he has planted all non-GMO corn, all right? And still the, the hybrids are still good, just don't have any of the traits. But one thing I've been seeing a lot of this year, especially in conventional corn, is the presence of European corn borer. Um, pretty much second generation is doing some damage out there. When I was walking in the field, uh, I saw several dropped ears. And as you could see right here, that corn borer went into the shank right there. And normally it can go up into the ear itself in that. Now, the whole thing about it is that we're not showing any damage. You know, pollination was good, had a little bit of uh, bird damage there at the top. But with this European corn borer damage, nice size ear like this, and with the weak shank, there's only one way it's going to go. It's going to go down on the ground in that. So we know that, especially in our non-GMO corns, that there is an issue out there with European corn borer. Um, there's dropped ears out there. We need to keep that in mind because, you know, this is a nice size ear in that. We've got to make sure to get it into the combine, into the bin as soon as we can, as soon as the weather breaks, because if not, we're going to see a lot more dropped ears later on because uh, the boars have basically done their damage and it's just a means of where these ears are getting so big, they're gonna hit the ground. As you can see here, this is the second generation corn borer. She came into the stock. You could see it's fracas right there, all right? And then what happens is, just like this one here, this ear here, it goes into the shank and it weakens that shank. Uh, the thing about this ear here though is, it isn't quite, as developed as this one here is and that, yes, it probably can hang on a little bit longer. The bottom line is eventually it's gonna fall off because of the damage from the European corn borer. So it's one thing to keep in mind is there's corn borer present. It's pretty much out there in our conventional hybrids and those fields there where they are planted to the conventional corn, we need to address those as far as making them priority one for getting them harvested because of because of what the corn borer has done, and it's gonna lead to uh, lower yields. Another plant I dug up uh, out in the field and that uh, come out of the rows next to it. And as you can see, this is, again, is a nice sight ear, well developed in that, really looking good. I don't see any corn borer, but that doesn't mean that corn borer is going to in every stalk in that. So sometimes we've got to keep that in mind. But, you know, it has proved itself in that the customer has used a fungicide to give the protection against gray leaf spot as well as northern corn leaf blight. And it still has some health to it as we could see all the way up to the plant. There is still some green. And this hybrid here does have very good late season plant health in that. Some disease, but the disease really didn't affect the ear. Again, the issue is, is that with these plants out there that we went through a dry spell here for the last several weeks, that the stalks are deteriorating and to keep these ears, um, so that we can run the combine through, we need to keep that in mind because there is some yield out there. We have gotta make sure it gets into the combine back into the bin. So we talked about disease this year. We know we had northern, we know we had gray leaf spot, all right? The other disease that came late this year was anthracnose leaf blight, all right? Starts at the top and works its way down, down the plant and spores on the leaf surface of these infected leaves will drop off hit the ground, and then a little bit of rain whatsoever, they'll splash up onto the stock and that. As we go through here, 
is that you could see this plant here, all these black lesions on here. All right, these are the spores. All right, now when you look at this plant, as you could start to see, these are, this is the base, and these are going to be the lower inner nodes. As this node here is rotten, second one's rotten, third one's rotten, fourth one's rotten, fifth one's rotten. And this pith is really drying out, all right? So basically, we've got some stock issues out here. And really, when we start looking at some of these ears, like we've shown earlier, this is a big concern that I have trying to get the crop harvested because we know it's not going to be able to stand out there, especially if we get any heavy winds in it. Today it's raining, but you know that gives us a little bit of time. But once we dry out, we need to go ahead in some of these fields where we do have this stock rot out there because it will affect the quality of that plant. And with stock rots, the plants could come down in that. One thing is that you can do it by yourself. We'll go out in the cornfield, you see these black spores on the leaf surface and that, do the old pinch test, all right? Thumb and forefinger, pinch it down in there. If you don't feel any resistance within that pith of that stalk and it feels very loose in that, you need to get in there and keep those plants or keep those fields in mind that they need to be harvested because more likely they're gonna have this stalk rot just like we're seeing in this picture right here. I mentioned a little bit before about anthracnose stalk rot basically caused by the spores on the leaves from anthracnose leaf blight. She starts at the top and works its way down. Um, and as you can see here on this leaf surface, this salmon coloring of the leaf, and I sometimes say even copper coloring of the leaf, this is the symptom of anthracnose leaf blight. There's a lot of spores on these leaves. Again, the spores will fall down, hit the ground, splash up onto the stalks here, and start to work on the node and start to deteriorate as far as these stalks, poor stalk quality in that. Another thing to think about anthracnose stalk rot with all these spores out there, if everybody remembers right, this is where you start in the morning, start shelling corn. By the end of the day, it doesn't make any difference on the color of combine. Red, green, yellow, silver, it'll be back black by the end of the day. That's anthracnose and that. So, you know, right now we've got some nice sized ears out there. We've got issues out here with corn borer. We've got issues out here with stock quality, especially the stock rot. Nice sized ears. The corn borer's working on some of these shanks. These are some of the issues that we need to keep in mind here uh, in the nearby as far as getting out into these fields, especially our non-GMO or conventional corn and get them harvested. Because if we don't get them harvested on time in the very near future, chances are with some heavy winds, they're gonna go down, the ears are gonna drop to the ground in that, and it's gonna hurt our yield. So, you know, these are a couple ideas we need to keep in mind. You know, and we knew we had a lot of water issues this year, we had a lot of compaction issues, but we still have some nice sized ears out there. Our goal is, is to go ahead and get them harvested as soon as possible so the grain's in the bin and we can sell it later on and help our bottom line. Thanks to Bill Mullen, Director of Agronomic Services at Seed Consultants Incorporated. I'm Andy Eubank. This is Who's Your Ag Today, Indiana's Farm Network.